Also, shout out. Those protein bars taste just like empty rice stuff. I told you. It's delicious. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely delicious. Speaking of gluten, because you said donuts, you know Joe C, like Kid Rock's Joe C, like I'm the J-O-E to the C-Ho. Call me Joe C, got more of the game than Coleco. I'm a freako, call me sick, three foot nine with ten foot dick. Like, you know Joe C? That, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, no. Do you, you, you don't? <laughs> You don't remember the little person that, that Kid Rock carried with him who, like, Oh, rap, yeah, okay. And he was actually involved in WWE for a while? Like, as, like, a mascot almost is what they have as strange. Kind of, you know what he died of? What? Celiac disease. Really? Severe form of celiac disease. That's terrible. So you're telling me this motherfucker could just ate too much gluten? Died? No, I guess it was a, it was a severe... The first thing I, when I first read that, I thought, you're telling me this dude just couldn't get a fucking non-wheat bagel? It was the 90s. It was a weird time. He died in 2000, I think. So it, it, it was. God, you can't have anything without gluten. Gluten, get it. You better eat it. If you want food, you're eating gluten. Nowadays you can. But back then, I don't know what you're supposed to do. But it was, I guess he, it was such a severe form when he was born with it. That, like, it that's why he was dwarf. Like It sounded, it sounded him looking like dwarfism. Holy shit. Yeah. And like he had to get dialysis every day. He was taking 65 pills a day. It's not worth it. Like At what point is living not worth it? That dude slayed the tail as Josie. I mean, I'm sure he did. Because in the 90s, you can say that. That's where I'm at right now, mentally talking about it. Because in the 90s, he was just slaying. You know he was. Yeah, but Him I, and Nick Foley were boys. But how did you get that? How do you get that gig? Where do you get that gig where you're the little person for Kid Rock? Well, because I think he was a rapper who met Kid Rock. Well, because I think he's from Detroit. Also. Kid Rock, okay, hold on. Let me bring all my clout over here because I'm Kid Rock and you're in. Is that what happened? I think they, it's just one of those things where they met, they became friends, they toured together, and then like he kind of just joined Kid Rock. That's amazing. When I when I saw Kid Rock in concert, it was right after Josie died. So I guess it would have been like 01 or late 2000. And like he dedicated his own to Josie. They inflated a giant penis in the middle of the... Of, of, wow, like, of course. Like, yeah, three foot now with a ten foot thick. I love it. That's a realistic verse. I 100% believe you because... He has more game than Coleco. I know you love that one. I do like yeah. it. The old Coleco vision. Speaking of dicks... I just finished uh, Mick Foley's second book. Yeah, how was that? The only thing about it, it's okay, it's fine. Something weird about Socko? There's all kind of weird stuff about Socko. But he, <laughs> there's two stories that involve Al Snow's penis. No, wrong. One of them is Val Venus's penis. That one, I believe. Al Look, Snow, hold up. You know Val Venus, like, I mean, he is, wow. He is now, but even back then, he was like a super conservative. Like, strictly fucking conservative. Like, everything about him is conservative. Uh huh. Glad he joined RTC then. Yeah. But uh, the, the story about uh, Valvanus' penis is apparently Socko, it was when they, do, <laughs> they, they were doing Rocket Sock Connection. Yeah. And they made Rocco. Remember the Sock Rocco? Yeah. Well, after Rock had it, he threw it in the garbage. And I guess the, there was a backstage segment where Valvanus walked by the garbage, saw it, and obviously he stuffed. So he just grabbed the sock and stuffed. So then he had a match with Mankind and Mankind went to pull it out and apparently he pulled out Val's penis. Like, he grabbed it and pulled out Val's penis. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. But the Al Snow joke's even better. Apparently, they were backstage, and uh, mankind, Mick saw that Al didn't have any underwear on with his, with his singlet. And he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, no, man, it shows lines and stuff. No, I need smooth, sleek. <laughs> and Mankind's like, okay. Thought about it. He said, went over to talk to Hardcore Holly, who they were having a match with, because he knew that he could talk hardcore into doing this. Oh, yeah. They go out. They're having the match. Hardcore grabs him in a suplex. Before he lifts him up, rips on the fucking, uh, on his singlet. Balls are out. Balls dong is out. <laughs> and holds him up in a fucking suplex with his fucking Johnson out. And I guess I was like trying to get it down while still holding up in the fucking suplex. And man, I was like, I felt so bad. He's like, it looked like a robin's egg in a nest. <laughs> Because oh I guess God. Al didn't shave either. Or trim even. Oh, Al, come but on. He said he, he, Mankind said it was the one rib that he actually felt bad for. But then, like, once the suplex ended and Al, you know, got it down, Mick expected to look at him and him being, like, mad or sad, and he was laughing his ass off. <laughs> that seems like Al Snow in a nutshell. I feel like Al Snow's a great guy. The whole Mick Foley book is just Al Snow joke after Al Snow joke after Al Snow joke. How could you go wrong with that? That sounds amazing. You actually made me want to read in that. In addition to Meet Street Posse joke, Meet Street Posse joke, Test joke, Test joke. Al Snow joke, Al Snow joke, Ooh, Al Snow joke, Al Snow speaking joke. Speaking of test, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's my boy. We'll get there. Um, hello? What a what a weird cold opening that was. We talk about Josie, we talk about Dick, so I didn't shake that. All I taste is tea. 
Okay, we're in Oakland, California. Smackdown 73. All the lemons at the bottom? Yeah, that's how it works. It separates. It's like vinegar and oil. Nope. Water, Water and vinegar. <laughs> nope. Is vinegar's not involved? I don't think vinegar. Vic vinegar? Vic vinegar. Honey and vinegar. Oh, God. Oh, um, God. We're in Oakland, California. It's Smackdown 73. The second Smackdown of the 2001 calendar year, Year of Our Lord. And, uh... As that is, every show this year has been opened by a Vinnie Mac promo. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. And I bring the question: When did Jack Tunney go away? Jack Tunney? Yeah. Ninety-four. He was in. He was in the. He was in the first year of Raw, at least, because I've watched. Yeah, the first year of Raw was ninety-four. Yeah. So what happened? But he wasn't. He wasn't that big of an on-screen character. He was the best on-screen character. You're, that's like saying J.J. Dillon and his catcher's mitt is a fucking great on-screen character. I don't know. I miss him. No, you don't. Watching this, I miss him. Do you think he's dead? But definitely. Do you think Jack Tony's dead? The man was 100. <laughs> what if he's still alive? It, what if he's still alive? I'll chug this. Canadian producer. That's... that's <laughs> I only I went from that. Canadian promoter. John Jack Tunney Jr. was a Canadian professional wrestling promoter. He was known worldwide for his appearances. He said was, so he's dead. Tunney's tenure was during the company's initial worldwide popularity boom in the 80s, the peak days of Hulkamania. He died in... Probably 95. Born January 21st, 1935. Holy Christ. Toronto, Canada. Died 24th of January 2004. Well, I'm glad he got to see the millennia. Why? I mean, everyone should see at what least was, one. What was he excited about? Y two J? Do you think Jack Tunney's a Y two J mark? <laughs> Definitely. Jack Tunney, of course. Sit, Jack Tunney's sitting at home. Yeah, we got him. Yeah. We got him. Y two J. We got him. Shut the hell up. Um, I just took this out of where we were. I just because I, I needed a. Pen. You got you got excited. I needed a pen. You don't even know where we were. No, I put that in there randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was circled, wasn't it? You circle every week. There's a star on that. What is a star? There's a pentagram. I don't think I would have put a star. Hmm. Why did you put a star? What happened? 1269. Oh. Great. So we start this (laughs) SmackDown with a Vinnie Mac promo. 1269 is not even circled. Um, So a great sign. You make me a hearty Oh my boy. god, no, hold on. It says lead on one side. There's a drawing of a female figure with her pants down and like a thong up her neck. I'm glad you saw it. And it says, it says you make me a hearty boy. Amazing. Man, I have her in here. Lead, you make me a hearty boy. That's how I saw <laughs> I'm glad we saw the same. Time. I rewound and paused it. I was like, "What?" Okay, the I didn't. I didn't go that I was much like, into what? it. The, well, I had to. I had to. We'll get to it, but I had to go back and watch the opening promo again after I finished the show. There was something that I needed to look into. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, Vinnie Mac opens the show. Comes out looking like the confident bastard that he is. It's why don't. Triple H is current. I haven't heard a, a Triple H authority promo in a while, but why don't like Stephanie's authority promos connect the way that Vince's did? I have a theory. Oh, well, let's hear it. The theory is on the TV program, you have King and and Jr. commenting as it's happening. So you, as a viewer, is getting both sides of other people's feelings on it. Yeah, like he's like, "Oh yeah, I believe him. He's fair," and Jr. is like, "Oh no, he isn't." So you have that own inner turmoil, whereas now you don't hear announcers at all during promos. No, they're just thrown out there, and You're they're right. I didn't even and they're just that. let to land how they land. Yeah, you need that backup commentary to push the point. I think for a TV audience, I think so. Yes, because it's almost like they're hanging them out to dry now for a lot of them. Yeah, either you got the chops on the mic to make us believe it, or whereas before, or like, you're Chris Benoit. What doesn't have the chops? <laughs> doesn't have the yeah, chops. On the we'll mic. get there, but or or you or like feeling King being like yeah yeah because he was the heel commentator. He's a fair time. man. He's a fair man. Yeah. He's definitely a fair man. <laughs> and he's not at all. But I need that. I'm like yeah, this is outrageous. You know. And then and then Jr. is saying no. That oh you stop it. You okay? That's more of a monsoon Heenan thing. <laughs> but but it was essentially the same thing. 
Uh, no, it wasn't even him. It was Cole on this. Or it wasn't JR. It was Cole. Yeah, it was Cole. So Cole was on here saying, that, yeah, no, no, no. You, he is not fair. You, you need to quit. And now Cole is a heel commentator whether he's trying to be or not. Because everybody hates him. Yeah. Cole's great at his job, but I do despise when he's repeating the same things over and I over did, and over I again. just feel like King and JR are more organic. Even even Cole at this time was more organic. Like I feel like it's just like force fed lines now. There's a lot of force fed lines. I had trouble dealing with King on this because of modern day things that happened. Did you see him at the fucking rally? No. He went to that rally where I don't I don't know, I don't want to get played water. We don't need to talk about it. Yeah. Well, we don't need to talk about it. I mean this is King two thousand one. It's what you expect. Oh, he was still a piece of shit human in two thousand one. I mean, but I wasn't but in he, my head at the time. It was funny, I don't know, you know. Um, he comes out, he says, the Triple H and Austin acrimony, by the way, he, he landed the word acrimony, which I was pumped up about. Yeah, he did. You don't hear acrimony a lot? You never hear it. Uh, I saw I've heard it three times. One was Vince and two were you just now. You didn't see the movie acrimony? You yeah. didn't even see the trailer for the movie acrimony? Mm-hmm. To, to, to Raji P. Henson? I don't watch trailers, I'm you. To Raji P. Henson, she wrecks a Jeep and pushes like a trailer over with it. Because her boyfriend was cheating on her. It's pretty fucking great. Wow, that sounds like a great time. I think that's acrimony. What the movies I see? Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, it says Triple H and Austin Acrimony ends tonight, and everybody's fucking pumped up. And he says by neither of them appearing and having a twenty-four hour calling period, which is just unbelievable. Whole promo. Um, he suggests that neither of them show up. Um, he then considers Austin in the Rumble. He says, "I will consider Austin being in the Rumble." He says, "But we need a number one contender for the world title." Yeah. So, Triple H. Of course. And then that's when, the, oh, he's so fair. It's such a fair call. King is yelling. Um, and then, I guess, uh, well, Triple H is going to face Angle for the world title at Royal Rumble. And Vince said, I sent out feelers. Not what he said, but I'm paraphrasing because I don't know the words. Yes. He said, I, I was going to get a satellite link up for both of them, and only one of them accepted. <laughs> and then Triple H and Stephanie are in a hotel bar, it looks like. First off, I want someone to look at me like Steph looks at the whole time. Oh my god. It it was like a Daphne situation where I was just staring at her. Yeah, but then I heard nothing Triple H said because I just looked at his arms the whole time. You're not wrong. Wow. He was he he was just sitting there and he wasn't even flexing. No. His his arm was this big. How's a man that large? It was monstrous. And I think this isn't this where he came back from an injury? Yeah. So that's why he was fucking a monster. Yeah. But Steph's just like I couldn't even imagine. I've never had anyone look at me like that. I've seen you look at some Bud Light cans like that. I mean, you're not wrong, but goddamn. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Um, yeah, Triple H and Stephanie accept it. They're at a hotel bar. I just look at Triple H's arms all the time. Um, Triple H has a great promo where he talks about when this wall, when when this acrimony... He doesn't say acrimony, but I'm just going to use it again. <laughs> just love that when this acrimony with Austin will end is what I say it ends. It'll be over when I end it. And then the quote was, he won't be able to sip beer because the halo he's the wearing halo. for his broken neck prevents him from it. Okay, hold on. When have we ever seen Austin bend his neck forward and drink a beer? It's, it's back. Whether it's moving or not, he's dumping it. It's not. <laughs> it's just, he's going he's to suck it up as it falls down his nose. Um, and then after he does a killer Austin promo, hyping that, he switches over to a... B plus promo and angle. See, why don't we have that anymore? Why? We don't have that. We don't have intertwining storylines. It's either you got one feud between two people. Like, it's like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, but you have someone else at the same time pegging for it, you know? Well, that has a lot to do with the roster also. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot more people that can be at that A level where this, there was only a few, so they had to be mingled around. But but they all were mingled. Because later on, we have a match for Rock, Rikishi... Kane and Undertaker, all kind of driving to get this a uh, chance for the title. I mean, they're still against. Well, Angle. They were they were out for the thirty the thirtieth entrance in the Rumble. Oh yeah, they were, they were, which is still for a title shot. But I mean, I just feel like everything is more intertwined. It's it's more cohesive. Where now it's just like everyone stands alone. But see, I felt it was. I I, I hear what you're saying, but I think having the monster Austin promo hyping up an Austin. An Austin match in the future took some of that focus away from where it should have been with Angle. Like he he's gonna face Angle, and I get that just happened, and I get how both were happening. But also we did have the mingling storylines when the Authority was around, and if you remember, we hated it. 
Because it was just shit character with shit character just jumping in and fucking shit up. But I mean, that was like an exception. We don't, we st- like, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is a good story. If you keep a better eye out, you'll still see some now and then. But it, it, it wasn't a, it's not a main card thing. Right and this now. is all the time, though, back then, you know? I mean... Well, because like I said, the, the card was limited and then... I, I don't... This is 2001... I'm trying to think, because Triple H just came back from injury, so it may have just been a way to get Triple H in, back into the card. Because they, that they had to really work harder on injuries back then. Now, they could just next man up. But back then, it was like, oh shit, what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> and, and because that, there was a very definitive break. But the next man up mentality just, it's not good either. I but there's a very definitive break, in, especially in 2001, between top guys and... Mid, mid-card guys. The, yeah, the mid-card. Yeah. There's a there huge is. There is. I, I agree with you. but I, And to, to, to WWE's own fault, it was it's that. Because yeah. they're pushing... Look at the main event. They could have thrown a mid-card guy in there made him, you know, put him over a little bit. But but this feels like, like, like a they, universe. They kind of were making it. I hate using yeah. the term universe, but this actually feels like a uh, WWE world, you know? like, And also, I guess, because both shows are... Storylines go together at this point, yeah. so that helps. But I don't know. I missed that. I, I thought this. I thought that was fantastic. But I. I. I, I but it was a great Austin promo. Quick switch into a, a great angle promo. I mean, the Austin promo was killer. It, it, like if I had to grade that alone, it's like a, it's like an A minus. Like that thing was great. Oh yeah. The angle promo still solid, but it was a B plus. Like it was just off of that Austin promo. Um, the Rock arrives 17 minutes late to the show. I couldn't help but to check the timestamp. Somehow The Rock can hear people chanting oh. for him. Like, he's like, like, just walking. And the thing is, that was filmed earlier in the day. Yeah. So nobody's even in the arena. And he's like, oh, they're going to cheer right here. But he sells it. I'm like, yeah, okay, Rock knows I'm talking about but it. 17 minutes late. He showed up. <laughs> All-star. All-star, top, top guy, 17 minutes late. Thanks, Rock. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Um, Edge and Christian can't find Kurt. They don't know where he is. They call him Pork Chop. <laughs> what the fuck? Edge and yeah. Christian have all the names. Where are you at, Pork Chop? I was like, what the hell? They're are talking you doing about it? his neck. They're talking about his thick neck. Oh. They call him Pork Chop because he has a thick neck. It was great though. Uh, next up, we have a match: um, Hardys with Lita and Billy Gunn. God damn, I can't wait till fucking Billy Gunn's out of a storyline. Uh, <laughs> Billy Gunn is so shoehorned in this storyline; uh, it's uncomfortable. Well, no, because he has his own storyline with. I felt like the Hardys were shoehorned in this. There was no reason for them to be in this match. No, uh, Dean. Oh, no. That's not this match. That's not this match. <laughs> what the fuck? You're right. Yeah, they were shoehorned. It was Hardys and Billy Gunn against RTC, uh, the team of Val Venus, Paul Buchanan, and the Goodfather. They came out with uh, Stevie Rich- Stephen Richards and Ivory. Uh, but Billy Gunn, I-, I like Billy Gunn. I love Mr. Ass. I don't like this the one character. I don't like the one. It doesn't land for me. I don't like me. it. Women seem to love it. Well, Anytime I mean, he comes out, I, I was going to go higher, but it has to be a lot louder for me to go higher. I I, I I agree with you. I don't like the one character. I like I like Mr. Ass. They definitely talked about the Dean angle for a while here, though. But it was mostly the spike pile driver on China that the reason Billy Gunn's mad. I don't know. He's been mad for months. <laughs> I mean, it's only been two weeks. Okay. It's been two, <laughs> it's like, it's been it is two months weeks. for us, but... Uh, Jeff is 100% wearing a crop top, and it was awesome. Yes. Like, Jeff was 100%, it was, like, he's on the ground, like, is that shirt gonna go down? He stands up, nope, right there. The Hardy, the Hardy's tag, tag moves are awesome. Oh, and they were so inventive at the They're time. so fluid, and, and they just work, like, you don't see that There's anymore. a reason that they were the best tag team at the time. Like, they, they worked so well together. Um, a couple, brothers. a couple quotes from King that stick out to me. Um, every time I look at, pl- every time I look at my Playboy, I think of China. <laughs> that's a, that's a quote he said. I mean, she posed for it, so Same one. probably every, actually China. Every time I think of Lita, I think of her in the shower. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, Dean, Dean had, Dean had one eye closed. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you close one eye and it's fine. And then, he, and then. Because it's not 3D then. Cool's like, what are what Dean's wife thinks that? And he's like, well, I explained this to JR last week. It's an <laughs> open marriage. It's an open marriage. <laughs> what the fuck? But I wish they would have continued with Dean's statement that she's married, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Dean don't give a shit. Jeans Man, he's so good. good. Oh, Jeans um, Did you happen to notice Billy's finisher? I don't know what it was. The fucking the one or something. What was that? Doesn't it look like fucking Jinder's convoluted mess? Yes, the, the, co- the Coloss? The Coloss. Yeah, it's it, what it, It's a convoluted I mess. I was like, mm. It's very similar, but it's not. 
The one. This is the first time we've seen it, right? No, it was it was the finisher on his last SmackDown match. Oh god, it's so un <laughs> so unfinisher like that. He hits about. it, but then Ivory distracts the ref. Um, Steven Richards comes in with probably my okay. Who is Steven Richards? What do you mean? That's fucking Steven Richards. I don't know who he is. He was an ECW guy for a while. He was, mm. he was like Job Squad guy. Okay. Did you just wake at me accidentally. <laughs> just I, happened. I think something in my eye. Why? Because you like Steven Richards' super kick. I know you did. It was a good super kick. Steve Richards throws a good super kick. That's not the best kick of the night. We'll get there. Oh, God. Holy shit. Steve Richards throws a great super kick. Uh, Bull falls on him for the win. They take off. Okay. Now it's time to get made you upset. Why? What's happening? Backstage, American Badass Undertaker promo. Has a huge rip in it. That's what I have. That's a large amount of Big League Chew. <laughs> it, okay, it's not Big League Chew. I guarantee you that. Has a monster rip in Monster. It. And opens it up by spitting. I didn't. I didn't see him spit. I'm like, what's he doing? He with spits, that? and then it starts. And who's interviewing him? I'm, I can't remember. Oh, her it's name. it's mm, the short blonde girl. I can't remember her name. Oh God, is it Lillian? Yeah, okay. Lillian Garcia. Yeah, right? it's Lillian. Lillian's interviewing him and just talks about the Rumble. And word for word, this is a Roman Reigns promo. You could take this thing out verbatim. Every word he said, and it's the same exact. It wasn't a good promo. I, 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 why am I fighting you on this? I didn't think it was good. It's awful. I was too, I was too distracted by the huge it's chop. Not good. It says he says, "You a betting woman?" Hold on, I need to put in my mouth. <laughs> well, I mean, hold on. We're trying to keep it PG here. Okay, what are you gonna do <laughs> when you're done? I'm concerned. It's fine. I like it. Roll with it. <laughs> That's not even big enough. Uh-uh. It's bigger than that. It's big. Really? Really? Are you a betting woman? Because that's my yard out there. I'm the big dog and I run that yard out there. And the thing you should be worried about out there is me. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna piss myself. Oh, oh man. my god. There's a lot of spill on that paper. I'm just gonna leave it right there. <laughs> it was awful. It was. It was not a good promo. I still love American Badass Undertaker. I do too, but it was such an unnecessary promo to begin with. It's a Roman Reigns promo. I watched it back twice. I played it again, imagining Roman Reigns saying those exact words, and it's it. It's the same thing. Biggest chew of oh, my life. It's disgusting. I've never seen. He had a whole can in there, and then some. And I don't know. I mean, it is Undertaker, so it probably was real chew. But I thought it might have been like side hack tobacco rather than the actual chew chew. But, uh, let's move past that, Jesus Christ. Um, we have Test. Match of Night. Test versus... Our truth. Wait, no. K-Quick. K-Quick. Tell me you didn't fucking want it. Okay. He was out getting rowdy. I didn't know our truth went by K-Quick. Yeah. I was so... Because this guy just kept out fucking rapping. I'm like, that's our truth And he's like, K-Quick's out here! This was 17 years ago. 17 years ago. It looks exactly the same. And moves better now. Yeah. I hope the I hope the mic picked up your weird stomach sound. Um, K Quick is out here getting rowdy. Um, Cole calls K Quick the twenty nine year old young superstar. By the way, it doesn't say he's twenty nine, but it says this young superstar. K Quick's twenty nine at this point. Okay. Okay. Twenty nine. How old do you think Test is at this time? Just just off the top of your head. Well, Test died when he's like thirty five, so he's gonna be like twenty four. Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Holy so shit. four years younger than K Quick. So Tess doesn't get a young. But K-Quick is the young superstar. He's the young up-and-comer. Which, by the way, a 25-year-old Test here, that dude, Sky, was the limit for a Test. Like, he, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of his later, later stuff, but seeing how much he improved just up to this point... Oh, he was Kevin Nash, but good. Yeah, I wasn't pulling fucking quads. <laughs> uh, there's a weird back handspring, and then he eats the biggest food I've ever seen. Oh my god, he kicked a fucking hole in his chest. <laughs> I've never seen a man take a kick like that. It was a legit kick. It was disgusting. It was. It was the biggest kick of the night. And, I mean, I'm going to be honest. K-Quick sold his ass off this whole match. That wasn't a sell. That was a legitimate kick but that came other, in the chest. Other than the, the ch- came in the chest. But Tess was just throwing him around this match. Like, like a fucking... Every time he did a move, I feel like he like accelerated K Quick down. The match was solid. It was a good. Match. I, liked it. I liked it. And he was supposed to do that to K Quick because K Quick in this instance is the jobber. K Quick, I've never seen someone more okay with being just mid card. 
By the way, you can also tell how uncomfortable WWE was with going forward with a rapping black character because they made his beat rock music. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get that that kind of music, like the the, the new metal was famous at, at the time. Yeah. It's a, but Kate Cook was an actual rapper. Our truth was an actual rapper also. Really? Yeah. Wow. So Does he have albums? I, I, maybe. I don't know the name under them, though. We might get a... He's definitely done features, at least. We should look into that later. <laughs> okay. Not kidding. But it, it just... It, that's how I, I feel like that's a front office move, where they're like, we can't have him rap it on the beat. calm down here. We better get some guitars involved. Next, we'll have women wrestling. If there's not a guitar involved, I don't like it. It's not my style. They can do that down in the city. <laughs> um, yeah, solid match. Test versus Kickwick, I never thought in 100 years. I even call him our truth it. Test versus our truth. On paper, you see test versus our truth. You're like, oh Jesus. Christ. She's Chris Test and our truth. Entertaining, hard hitting. That's all I want from a match. It was a job match, though. It was definitely a job match. K-Quick got like very little offensive in at all. And his his back handspring has improved greatly in the past 17 years. Yeah, I feel like he botched it. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know if he knew how to do it. And he like panicked at the last minute and turned sideways. But then he, he fucking got his chest caved. Then he ate a boot. Yeah. Um, small backstage segment where Kai and Ty are just yelling at XFL cheerleaders in the locker room saying, show, sh- show us your pom-poms. I loved it. Indeed. <laughs> that's the, that's my favorite thing. I don't care. <laughs> that's my favorite thing. If we get a soundboard, that's one of the things. What? Indeed. Indeed. We should get a soundboard. I, I've been that. looking for a fucking, I've been looking for a soundboard forever. Give me a little bit. I'll think about it. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, Funaki's still being with the business. That's crazy too, though. Uh, who would have thunk off this show? The people still involved in the business right now. I mean, other than Vinnie Mac. Because, okay, let's run down what we've seen so far. Vinnie Mac. Triple H doesn't count either because he's yeah. in front office. Rock, no. Edge and Christian, no. Hardy's Jeff is. I mean, aren't Edge and Christian, they do the podcast. Isn't that WWE sponsored? Mm. No. No, it's not. Good for them. Um, Hardy's Matt retired. Jeff, I guess, is still wrestling. Isn't that a goddamn shame, Matt retired? We never even yeah. talked about that. Yeah, I know. I mean... Good. I don't want him to damage his body so he can't enjoy his life. I feel like he's like, once his contract's up, he's going to TNA or something. Oh, he's definitely not going to TNA. I, I wouldn't doubt if he doesn't like pop up as Broken Matt in like New Japan or something. But I don't know if he'd have many matches. I could just see him over there having a good time. Um, Lita, kind of still involved in this down there. Billy Gunn, nope. Steroids. <laughs> all, all of RTC. But... Billy Gunn did show up for the thousand Raw or whatever. <laughs> we don't need to talk about it. They, that was a one-day contract because they fired him for steroids. Um, Val Venus, Bull Buchanan, good father, Steve, uh, Steve Richards, and Ivory. Even though Ivory just got the Hall of Fame last year. Doesn't Ivory even match Evolution? I think she does. And I'm, I'm, maybe. I'll be pumped up either way. Uh, but either way, not full-time in the business. Um, badass Taker. We don't need to fucking talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we're going to watch that later. Test. There's our truth. Kai and Ty. And then Angle, even though Angle's still around. But let's stop there. R-Truth and fucking Funaki are the two still involved with the fucking company. Why? That's amazing. Why? If you had to pick somebody, it wouldn't have been them. No. No. But they did good for themselves. They did. Even Lena did good for herself. I I think... I think they all did good for themselves. If I had that kind of... I mean... Lasting career? Realistically, the one that didn't do good for himself was Test. No. I mean, yeah. is that because he's dead? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bull Buchanan might be dead, too. Bull Buchanan, I think he's definitely dead. I'm pretty sure. But we have... Even Angle, Angle had a match last year. Bull Buchanan is very much alive. It's, oh, shout out to Bull Buchanan. Bull, Sorry I thought you were dead, Bull, champ. Bull Buchanan is very much alive at, at is the right age of 50. Oh my god, he's only 50? Yeah. Holy fuck. Sorry, Bull. <laughs> I know you watched this. It says he retired November 22nd, 2014. Oh, what, are you still wrestling four years? Shit. He still wrestled 10 years after. Sorry. 13 years after this. Where did he go, though? Because he was in the World Wrestling Federation, till, or the World Wrestling Entertainment. He was in WWE till 03. Then he went to All Japan from 03 to 07. Then he went to Pro Wrestling Noah. With oh since from oh seven until you gotta take what you get, okay. And then he then he was on the independent circuit for ten years. Um, but okay, Bull Buchanan, cool man. Good for him. Buchanan retired from professional wrestling on November twenty second, twenty fourteen, teaming with 
to face AJ Steele and Brad Lynch in his final match. Who do you think Bull Buchanan teamed with in his retirement match? Val Venus? No, you're kind of close though, because it's the same era, but not necessarily. Oh shit, I'm kind of close. Just be in the level, the level of wrestler. Okay, it's a wrestler from kind of the same time period, but from a different faction. The faction was earlier though. Uh, from WWE. Mm-hmm. Ooh, early faction. X Pac. Not a monster faction. Like RTC was kind of a <laughs> RTC was kind of a fuck me. RTC was a second tier faction. It was kind of like uh, oh, they were huge. They were a big faction too. Nah, no, okay. RTC, no one's doing right. No, to I'm censor. talking about who this person. Was. Oh, they were. Yeah, they were a big faction, but then they weren't a big faction. <laughs> it don't make sense once I tell you who it is and what the faction you was. You better tell me because I can't even think of another faction right now. It was earlier than this. Or like how earlier? Five years. Were there factions back then? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. The only other faction I can think of, like, prior to um, DX, and maybe a little earlier, is, like, Four Horsemen. (laughs) That's it. You're blank in between Four Horsemen and RTC. (laughs) Nobody else has ever existed (laughs) in between Four Horsemen and Right to Censor. They revolutionized factions. Who else was there? What other factions were there? The Ministry was a faction. Okay, hold on. Throw out some 80 factions. Late 80s, because um, that's when wrestling started. Well, Tell me at wrong. that point, tag teams were, were factions, kind of. Oh, tag, we're going tag teams? That, not, not in this case, not with this character. But I mean, like the... Okay, you had uh, Paul Heyman's... The, da- the Dangerous... When he was Pauly Dangerously... They, they, they had a faction. I can't remember what their name was, though. Um, the Million Dollar Corporation. That was a faction. Oh. Um, fuck. There's many more. Uh, Legion, of, Legion of... Dungeon of Doom. There's a lot. Okay. Best of all time. Okay, Legion of Doom is pretty good. Dungeon of Doom. I, Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> um, I don't know who. He was in the Nation of Domination. Nation of Domination. Farouk? No. Oh, Independent shit. Circuit, 2014. <laughs> I don't know. It's for- Farouk, Rock, yeah. Rock was in it. Oh god damn it! Mark Henry was he? Mark Henry was in it. Well, I'm just going off members I can remember. Yeah. Oh, there was one more. He was There's big two guy. More. Oh, no. one of them's in RTC. Goodfather. But what name do you go by? Mm, I don't what, think you're gonna pull it. What did he go by? I don't think you pull it. I put a dollar on it. Fuck. I don't think you're going to get it. I'm not, but I do know it. Like, I mean, I don't know if I know Because he it. went by the first name of this character prior, and then once he joined the nation, they added the surname. <sighs> I cannot remember. Kama Mustafa. Kama Mustafa. He went by Kama prior, and then added the Mustafa. I remember Kama. I don't remember the Kama Mustafa. Yeah. And then the other the other member is the one who he teamed up with. Oh, I didn't even get him. No. God damn it. Who was it? Who else is left? You got Henry, Farouk, Rock, and Kama. There's one more. I mean, I don't... Some say as the most limber neck in wrestling. Limber neck in wrestling? Yeah. As the most limber neck. What does that mean? Do I know what that is? Yeah, you should. It's a, it's a person of color. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of what the nation was about. That was kind of their thing. Oh, man. I cannot remember who. D-Lo Brown. D-Lo... Fuck! Uh, for, uh, okay, this is terrible. For some reason, D-Lo Brown and Farouk mold into oh each boy. other. Oh, boy. One of them's a Hall of Famer. The other's D-Lo Brown. <laughs> <laughs> is D- D-Lo's the one that broke... Um, what's his Draws his neck. neck yeah. yeah, okay. Although, after Draws got out of surgery, he he asked for D'Lo, and D'Lo came in his room, and Draws said, I don't blame you. Don't blame yourself. Oh, no, no. I, they're they're that's friends. Wild. They're good friends, yeah. I think. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's D'Lo, but that's... Okay, now that, now, we're, now that we're off the fucking Bull Buchanan train, holy shit. That went downhill. <laughs> what a shit train. That thing goes right into the fucking ditch. So, D'Lo Brown... <laughs> teamed up with Bull Buchanan yeah. for his retirement match. Hey. <laughs> that's mean, trivia you're going to need to know. One day, That's trivia. You will. Twenty fourteen. At one point, it's gonna pop up. You remember that? What is on trivia night at some dive bar you're at? Um, 
How do we get on Bull Buchanan? Oh, we were talking about who was dead. Okay. Um, there was another sign. <laughs> Bull Buchanan is a lot. In that first segment that I saw. It just said, simply, Trish Maestratus. Don't know what it means. Don't know if it's something somebody said before. But 100% it said Trish Maestratus. And that's... That, that's Might be my new favorite thing. Um, we have an angle backstage promo where he talks about the Olympic Games of life. <laughs> and it's it's pretty fantastic. Angle, angle was a great promo. The fact that Angle was so good at wrestling and everything he did this fast, for years hearing that, it didn't make sense to me. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, fucking Angle was good. We fucking get it. But, like, now after I've experienced more bad wrestlers and I've watched indie shows and things, and the fact that Angle didn't even see a wrestling ring until, like, two, three years prior to this, and he's this fucking good, I get it. I understand why everybody praises him. It, yeah. It's fucking astonishing. Is it me or, like... I don't know. I feel like these promos back then were just fire. Like, I don't understand. I mean, I don't even think it's nostalgia glasses at this point. Like, it, it, it is, but it's not pure nostalgia. It's, you have you had that suspension of belief. Back then, you suspended belief, and you were like, yeah, yeah. And you, that comes back to you when you hear it. Because that same thing happened to me during, we'll get there, during Austin's promo. Okay. The same thing happened to me. I'm just like, oh, god damn. Yeah. But they actually get me hyped up. And uh, honestly, I know this is probably biased, but I watched Becky's promo on uh, SmackDown last week when she was showing off her poster. I got that same feeling. Like this, like she's this is legit. Like I, it, it, I suspended my belief. I get it. I, I think a lot of it has to do with that most promos are 100 percent written and, and practiced beforehand. Yeah. Whereas I don't know if Becky might have just been given bullet points. Because she's gone out and done that heel promo before, she can do it. Yeah, and she's she's you know she's up there. And like the problem is the top guys now, your Roman Reigns, your Brock Lesnar, they're not good at mics. They can't go out there with bullet points. They need to. I mean, Brock can't talk because his, you look at Brock and you're like, oh yeah, she's gonna talk like this. You see, Becky got voted great, one of the greatest SmackDown wrestlers of all time. She beat John Cena. <laughs> Hold on. What happened? How many times did Brian vote in this fucking thing? <laughs> no, for real. Like, they did on WWE, they did the the top SmackDown wrestlers, and she's in, she's like seven. Cena's like 11. I mean, Cena didn't spend much time on SmackDown, though. And now. <laughs> no, I mean, he wasn't a big SmackDown staple back really? then either. Really? I thought he was... When they, when they did the brand split... He was fucking raw really? forever. It was only like the recent brand split where he went to SmackDown where it was a big fucking thing. We're going to get there because I don't know. Again, missing 10 years of wrestling. <laughs> uh, fucking 14 years. Angle recruits Trish's manager. Ooh, yeah, I put, ooh, Trish. I was pumped. Uh, okay. Next, Edge and Christian come out. But again, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but you have thrown Trish into the main event, which is still kind of a storyline between her and Steph with whole Vince. Like, it's thrown in a different storyline at the it same was, time. It was just using Angle in order to advance Trish's storyline. Because Trish isn't going to be actually in the storyline as of now. It's just to piss Vince off. Yeah, but and but it's also adding the... If this happened now, imagine how many times we'd see Roman Reigns on the show. And how many times we wouldn't see a Drew McIntyre? How many times we wouldn't see a Dolph Ziggler? How many times we wouldn't see a Jinder Mahal? How many times we wouldn't see a Seth Rollins? Because, like, at the, the four top guys are getting all the fucking thing. Like, they're getting all, everything, all the time. So if all the storylines are mixed up into them, the lower guys aren't getting enough time. But, I mean, it just still makes the whole show more of a concisive story. Like, it... it you got your supporting characters and you got your main characters. You're always going to have that. I mean, you got your top card and you got your mid card. And then, you know, there's Rosongo. You know, it just... Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Why don't you ease up? That's the Ascension, and that's fucking WWE's fault. It's <laughs> fucking WWE's fault. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't get to you. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, Edge and Chris should come out in Raiders jerseys because they're in Oakland. <gasps> Most of the Raiders are in the front row, apparently. I loved um, all this. They come out in Raiders jerseys for, a, for the cheap pop, the cheapest pops you can get. The old bait and switch, I put. And then Edge rips off or takes off his Raiders jersey and is wearing a Raven shirt. Bit of history that's needed for this segment. The Raiders were facing the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC Championship game later that week. Yes. And the fact that they did a pose where um, Christian still kept his Raiders jersey on and ran into Edge standing there like Superman wearing the 
the Baltimore down. thing, and he just fell down. It was it was a cheap pop to cheap heat, and it was so fucking oh, great. It was great. It was so great. Loved it. And it's Edge and Christian teaming up with the Crippler, the Rabbit Wolverine. Oh, calling him a Crippler does not feel right anymore. He crippled some. Oh, boy. No, he didn't. They're dead. There's no <laughs> Crippler involved. Yeah. Um, Edge and Christian and Benoit versus Y2J and the Dudleys. Um, Jericho comes out wearing a badass hockey jersey. Yes. <laughs> and he, he just spits a sick promo. How many catchphrases has Jericho had throughout All the years? Them. Is amazing. All of them. Shut the hell up. Jericho Jericho-holics. Monday Night Jericho. Monday Night Jericho. The list. I mean, on and on. Amazing. Uh, it calls out Benoit for title shot. Benoit sloppily stumbles his way through. I mean, he was he was playing the. It was okay. He was playing the generic, steadfast wrestler. Whereas he doesn't have a personality. He wrestles. That's what his specialty is. Which I it, it worked for him. Um, he says any match, any time. And Jericho Jericho says, "All right, ladder match." Well, because he's gonna climb him. To well, Benoit said, "You're gonna climb. Use me to climb the top of the WWE." And Jericho's like, "Well, okay, we'll climb." Ladder match. Uh, the match gets going, and <laughs> tell me you didn't pop. You had to have popped. Well, because I was like, man, I fuck, I just saw this fucking match. Last I week. thought the same thing. I said this match just happened. Yeah. And then the match is going, and glass shatters, and there's a thousand flash bulbs, and I, I sit, I'm sitting back on my chair, I go, why? <laughs> and I go, what's he gonna do? And he comes out with a chair. Slamming and clear, everybody. And clears your I said, he's just gonna. And I just laughed for like 15 minutes. I had to pause it. I was like, what's he doing? I think he's gonna hit everyone with a stunner. And he hit a few stunners. Um, he, Austin clears the ring. It's just madness. Clears it. He calls out McMahon. Tells him he'll split his skull wide open twice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. When, when he's like. He calls McMahon out. He's like, don't move anymore. Don't you move anymore or I'll split your skull. Then McMahon turns around, don't you turn your back to me or I'll split your skull. Great. Great. Uh, Austin starts to yell, am I in the rumble? That's all I need to know. Am I in the rumble? Um, Austin has a goddamn great promo. Like, I forget how good Austin is on the mic because I loved him in the ring so much and this the raise in hell. And he's like, I'm going to raise so much hell in Rumble. This is where I bring in the suspension of dis- like the suspension of belief. Because think of the sentence, I'm going to raise hell in the Rumble. It doesn't fucking make sense. It's a wrestling match. <laughs> like, it's a wrestling match. It it does, okay, yeah. what are you going to do, Austin? you, you got to stay in the ring. You're in there. With what are you going to do? you got to bring a truck? Like, <laughs> that's it. But, like, I, when I hear Austin say, I'm going to raise hell, I picture him just stomping mud holes and going nuts. And that's my suspension of disbelief. Like, Austin was more than a wrestler. Yeah, but, but the thing is... These these superstars right now, what we're talking about, make me believe that. Like I don't have to like trick myself. Like yeah, okay, I can see what we're doing with storyline. This I just I feel this. But also, I mean, it's this period is going to be looked at. These are some of the best wrestling personalities of all time. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. So it's it's going to be hard to compare anything happening to it. I, I get it. It's a lot of nostalgia, and you know my love for the, the characters. And it's just, even though a later, like this is the Attitude Era, eh, we're kind of getting out of the Attitude Era a little bit, but even the later era was called like the Reality Era, like the current era is called the Reality Era, but during this time, things were set in a reality-based space as of like, well, wrestling's here, but the stories come and then wrestling is it with the stories, but now it's the wrestling is the story, which I like that more. I, I appreciate what happened then, but back then, see that, yes. back then they were characters first and wrestlers second. Yeah. Now they're wrestlers first and, and characters second. second, which makes sense. I, I get it, but you can't tell me. You, you said you're telling, this was hype. I forget how I forgot how goddamn good Austin was, was as a promo. Like you know, and it, it, it it's ridiculous. He slams a beer on the ramp and leaves. <sighs> Legend. <laughs> it, it was great. It was fantastic. Um, and then we get a really risque moment. Where Trish is waiting in the shittiest of offices. Did you take a peek at this office? Yeah. There was p- barely any lighting. Two <laughs> shit couches and two fake plants. That's it. The whole thing. And you think they move them in for every show? Like, they have to. They have ridiculous. to. Trish is there. Uh, Trish said, Vince asks why she volunteered to be Angle's manager. And she says, oh, I've been so bad. I've been so bad. I guess I deserve a spanking. And Vince said, you've been a very bad girl. And then closed the door. Loved it. 
My question is, this whole storyline is about Steph, right? Yeah. Like, Steph's mad is happening. Steph doesn't watch the program. She's at the bar with Triple H, not watching the show. They're not watching the show. <laughs> They're not watching it. As soon as they were done with that satellite, the whole crew packed up and left. Austin, or uh, Triple H and Steph just Triple sat H at the bar. Triple H is doing curls and slamming beers. <laughs> and Steph's just staring at him. <laughs> That's why she doesn't see what's going on. It's, triple H. it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, then we're on to our... Uh... By the way, that's when I had to go back and watch the main event. Or watch the first, the first, first promo, promo again. Because when I first watched it, I thought Vince said that Austin's in the Rumble. No. He said he considered it. Yeah. Because when I watched, when, he's, when Austin came out yelling, like, Am I in the Rumble? I even wrote down, didn't Vince say at the beginning he was? See, Which would have made this funnier if, like... It, Vince has already said he's in the Rumble, and Austin's out here, Am I in the Rumble? Yeah. Said that earlier. I really expected Vince to say, Yeah, you're number one. You know, something like that. <laughs> but, nope, he's in the Rumble. They gotta save that for another show. They gotta save the number one right. spot for another that, show. That's fair. That's what I was thinking. I was like, because there's still, I mean, three weeks, two weeks till Rumble. Are we not watching Saturday Night Heat? Uh, it's not on the network. Okay. Then. I checked. Because Trish is hosting Sunday Night Heat, first of all. <laughs> Sunday Night Trish is hosting the next yeah, one. The 2001 isn't on there yet. I mean, it might be now, but when we started this, I, I, ch- I looked. Because okay. at the very least, I wanted to watch the Heats. By the way, Heat are great for some fucking low-card matches. Fantastic. Oh, yes. But I wanted to watch at least the ones before the pay-per-view. the pay-per-views. Because there was something great about that Sunday Night Heat show with... The arena, it's because it's when they had the setups. It's when they had the stage setups for the yeah. pay-per-views. And you saw them, like, just something like that. But that shit's, like, not even moving yet. Yeah, I never got to see the pay-per-view. I just saw the same. Heat. I was like, yeah! yeah. Oh, backlash! I'll, I'll figure it out one day what goes on, I guess. In my weird internet forums that don't exist anymore. <laughs> DragonBallToys.com wow. Main event, Kane versus Rikishi versus Badass Taker versus The Rock. Um, your boy is the ref in this. Earl had Earl had Earl had Shout it. out to Rikishi for being a top card guy. He's working on it at this point. If, he's, he's getting there. He might be the jobber, the top card jobber, but he's still top card. But I think it was 100% accidental. I still don't know the fucking backstory to that ran down Austin in a car storyline. It wasn't supposed to be Rikishi. It wasn't. They never, they never, they never no, said. No, they, they, they just but, made it Rikishi. Yeah. But but like Triple H paid Rikishi to do it, and that made Rikishi a top guy because he started he started a feud with Austin. I mean, it was like accidental. It was accidental top guard. Go back. Don't get me wrong. Rikishi deserves it. Rikishi's a hell of a worker. I've always liked Rikishi. When he's with Too Cool, I had that hat that was cut off on the top. I had that R.I.P. Brian Christopher. He dies. His dad goes to a Trump rally. Um, <laughs> can can we? <laughs> Uh, well, the match starts. Kane comes out first. By the way, I don't recall Kane being this fucking big. Oh yeah, Kane's arms Kane's are a giant. Monster. He's a huge fucking dude in this. When he had his little backstage segment, like, or maybe it wasn't even a segment. It was just like them showing who's in the next match, and he's just like rubbing his hands together. I was like, why are his arms so fucking big? Oh, he jacked, dude. Kane is. I have look. Kane is jacked. I haven't written down. <laughs> he's a big dude. It's a fucking monster. Um, Kane wouldn't let Rikichi get in the ring. Rikichi came down second, and Kane like kept like kicking at the ropes every time he tried to get in. Um, Taker starts riding down after. By the way, Taker, the gong and dead man walking needs to fucking come back. I don't care if he's badass Taker or if Roland's playing. I, I like the the footsteps, <laughs> and then the gong, dead man walking. Bob the pot or whatever. No, Roland. No, Roland. Get off Kid Rock. We're done with that. Actually, at some point, they do change his theme song on the network because they don't have the rights to what? To <sighs> Roland yeah, or something. They definitely have the rights to Roland because it's on there. Yeah, they do, but they they switch it. Kid Rock had a song. Kid Rock did his theme song. Over yeah, once too. I think I think that's the one they go over. That's probably the American Badass theme song. They probably don't have the right. Why wouldn't they have the rights to a Kid Rock? He's in the hall. Still money. I mean, honestly, at some point they do change it. We need to figure out if they have Stacey Keebler's song on there. Because K-Rock did Stacey Keebler's song, too. We'll look into it. She's got legs! That was kind of uh, Eric Bischoff's theme. He's back! And better than ever, he's back! 
If you look up WCW wrestler themes and the songs they ripped off for them, it's great. It's fantastic. It is. Uh, you need to listen to Tony's, not Tony Storm, uh, Rhea Ripley's theme for the Mae Young Classic. Wow. I'll have to. It's a banger. <laughs> it's a banger. It's a banger. Maybe we'll listen to it after this. She's fucking 22 years old. My God. And I'm almost starting. Sky's fucking, the fucking My life is... Anyway, Sky's We're not getting into life things. Um, um, take... Taker's riding... Kenny Rikishi start going at it as they Taker's still riding around it. the ring. <laughs> Taker's still riding around the ring. Taker jumps in and then The Rock's music hits. Has there ever been anybody that gets you more excited walking to the ring than The Rock? No. How does he do it? He's, he's, he's like walking slowly. <laughs> he's just... But but it's very difficult. He doesn't have his glasses on so you know he means business. You know it's time to roll. Oh, God. Uh, did you see Rikishi hit Taker with a monster potato? That's why Taker was busted open. Is that why? Taker, Taker came in for an elbow, like to hit him in the corner with an elbow, and Rikishi just fucking popped him in the eye. And like Taker even like sold it for a minute, and then I, all the credit in the world, I, I, I think Taker still was using working punches. Like it wasn't getting retribution. I mean, I'm not saying he never did at some point. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe the fucking kick at the end, but we'll get there. Well, hold on for a second. We saw Old School in 2001. Hold up. I don't understand. <laughs> what did you understand? Wow! Well, I don't understand. The old school was already old in two thousand one. Yeah, because he did it in his first WrestleMania appearance. What was his first WrestleMania appearance? Like ninety five. Taker didn't come in until like ninety three, didn't he? I mean, that still would have been. I guess it's eight years, but like, <laughs> he he did that move so much it was a signature, and then retired it. In this point, like, I don't understand. But yeah, I, I I put Taker juiced. I didn't see that fucking potato. No, he definitely didn't juice. He he caught a fucking he caught a fist in the eye. Well, good good for Taker being a good worker. Then you know, Taker debuted in '84. What? Taker debuted in '84. 1984. He signed with WCW in '89. Okay, I mean actual. Wrestling. He was mean Mark Calloway, and he joined the WWF in 1990. Was the Undertaker then? Yeah, he started as Undertaker. <sighs> Shit, that's way past when I thought. <laughs> Again, I never was a huge Undertaker fan. This is the Undertaker I know. This is the only one I really I enjoyed. Thought, man, Ministry Undertaker was my shit. He was so fucking dark. I don't know. He was so dark. It was so sa- it was satanic. It it literally scared me as a kid. I mean, it makes sense. It was awesome. It was terrifying. It was awesome. It was like that one episode of Goosebumps. Um, Rikishi, Rikishi does this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, we'll go ahead. He does a sick fucking suplex to Kane on the um, ramp, which I think <laughs> broke both of them. No, because they both come into the ring later. We'll get that. Um, Taker's busted open. Kane takes a monster choke slam, and then a giant rock bottom. Yeah. Like holy shit. Like Kane. We just talked about how fucking jacked Kane is. He's taking these fucking things like he's a fucking lightweight jobber. He kicks his legs up as high as they go. It's so nice. It's delicious. And then Kane takes... And then uh, everybody takes a huge choke slam, pretty much. And then uh, Rikishi wins. (laughs) First first thing about this, this is a fatal four-way, okay? Yeah. And nowadays, we have two people going at it in the ring and everyone else rolls out. Or lays on the side. That happened most of this match. Don't try to play it off. It didn't. Yes, it did. It didn't. Yes, no, it did. Because, sure, there was two people in the ring, but Rikishi and Undertaker, for the main part to remember, were outside still doing shit. You know? I mean, and they still switched around. They had four people in the ring doing, you know, sequences and everything. I mean, you don't get that anymore. You do. You're being too critical of this. I don't know, You're being man. Too critical. By the way, we missed something back here that I just remembered. After the Test Our truth match, uh, Regal attacked Test with the European title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Regal's a great heel. The European title has been relevant for 15 years at this point. <laughs> but Regal's great. Um, but back to the main event. Uh, Rikishi wins, and you want to look at my reaction to that? Rikishi wins. <laughs> I just laughed and put a bunch of LOLs. I put Rikishi won with an exclamation mark because I didn't expect Rikishi to win. I just, I, I laughed. Like, it happened and I went, what? And I laughed. And then fucking Kane cleans the ring. Well, hold on. Rock takes a giant choke slam. Taker takes an okay choke slam. Rikishi takes a decent choke slam. 
for Rikishi. I mean, he's a and large then man. Kane erupts fire from the posts. Show ends. Kane was a badass. Kane came out looking strong as shit too. I, good, good, good finish. No one looked weak in this. No, they didn't, um, they they weren't supposed to. And I, God damn, I miss Kane doing this. I miss it. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Kane's on Super Show, is he? No, because Pyro's back tonight. Pyro's back for the okay, not tonight. Pyro was back this morning it's for the morning. Super Show. I'm morning, you know, for sure. I'm sure Roman Reigns will have it all. In. But I do this all the time. I was like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, okay, it's the best. <laughs> That's the best. Where are you doing this? Just anywhere. Just wherever. Whenever I came pops in my head, I'm like, yeah. Yes. But what do you expect to happen? Not, it's in my head. It's happening. The pyro's going off. When you bring your arms down, how do you bring them down? You bring them down with your hands so pointed out? Because you're wrong. How does he do it? He, he brings it down and then like the arms cross. Okay. I don't know what that was. That was like a crotch chop. That's like a Kane DX motion. Kane was almost in DX. Almost. We, we have his X Pac weird team up thing. Man, X Pac betrayed him. What a dick! I Not even it. a good friend. I love that team. I loved it. I did. Who was he trying to have? Be, who was he in love with? Tori. <laughs> yeah. I sad we missed that. Okay. Um. So show ends. Here we go. This is what everybody tunes in for. But what's your what's your favorite part? Best part. Best part. Test and are quick. Are quick. quick, okay. Quick. Test and are quick. <laughs> Fuck, whatever. <laughs> test and are quick. By the way, at the end of the test and are quick match, um, our truth went for a handshake, and Test made him high five him. Like he held his <laughs> hand was up. So weird. He held his hand up, <laughs> and our truth had to like jump and fucking give him a high five. I don't know how Kick Quick got up after that fucking cavity <laughs> in his chest, but whatever. Um, my favorite part would probably fucking Undertaker's giant rip. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be honest. The thing that sports entertained me the most was fucking Austin clearing the ring. Not even Austin clearing the ring. When the glass shattered, he was running. In my head, I was running through like, hold on. I was laughing. I was legitimately in my house like, what? He just what? Like I was laughing and having such a great time He's with like it. Fucking Laparta, just coming out with a fucking chair. Austin cleaning house was my favorite part. I love it. Favorite part. It was so good. Um, what's your? You want me to go first with the worst? Sure. Uh, Taker's promo. God damn you. That's it. It's Taker's promo because it was fucking awful. I still love Taker, but it makes me wonder if because people hate Roman Reigns, that makes his mic work look worse. It's people love Taker, so it was okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm really trying to think that you kind of took mine. I mean, you could have it too, but... I, I really think that promo was the... Was certainly the... It sure the, wasn't pork chop. No, pork chop was the greatest. <laughs> um, you want to change your answer? Maybe. Uh, I, God damn, I love that pork I laughed. <laughs> I laughed, and I... Um, I'm gonna to to say Taker promo. I, I can't think of anything else that really rubbed me weird. <laughs> so still a Taker promo. Yeah, Taker promo. It's just that big jaw. Like I didn't understand. Okay, I don't understand. Make a talk. Something in this that you would book differently. An book, aspect of this. You book, would differently? book differently. I mm, right now I probably wouldn't have Rikishi win that fatal four way. That's what we go with. It's goddamn as I don't know. I've I've probably had Kane win it, but. So Kane win the four way. Yeah. But again, Kane Kane came out strong, so it's weird. Um, okay, I'm gonna book the entire back half of the show differently. Um, instead of Austin coming out and clearing house during the Edge and Christian match with the Edge and Christian by Wall the J Dudley match, I'd have him come out and clear the house with Kane or Kishi Taker and Rock. Not clear the ring, but he'd come out of the chair, knock people around. And have Rikishi win still. No winner. Match, no match goes off air, no winner. This continues, 30, the 30th entry is not decided yet. I'd have kept that going. I like that. So I'd had Austin come down. I get not wanting to make Kane, Rikishi, Taker, and Rock. Like, because he had to have that promo, you couldn't do it with this because then they would all have to be laid out. Yeah. But I think Austin could have came down, raised hell, if you will. And they could have had he could have opened up raw with the promo. I feel like I, I like that. I feel like he could have came down and stopped some mud holes, but I would have liked him to put put Rikishi on top of somebody. So you want you want Austin, but then again, you're, then you're making Rikishi look weak because he needs help to win. No, but 
everyone looks weak in that thing. Austin came out and leveled him up with a chair, and they're all knocked out, and he puts Rikishi on top of someone. But then, because he thinks Rikishi is the lesser man out of the four. So then he has to include that in his promo But are we week. wrong? But he has to include that in his promo next week, then. Because if not, it's going to look like he's made, that he's forming that. Well, you're goddamn right he would, because he's Stone Cold. And he, that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Okay, great. Um, what's your rating of the show? SmackDown seventy three. Do you want to, do you want a reference of what you picked SmackDown seventy two? Sure. I'm probably gonna do. Do you even it. remember the show? Do yeah. You remember what happened on SmackDown seventy two? Probably not. But... SmackDown seventy two. You gave it a that was, what, no. six. Six. I give this one a seven. Seven. Yeah. Hard seven. It wasn't really a bad match. Seven for stick. Was there a bad match? No, there wasn't. I mean, every match accomplished what it needed to do. Every match, I mean, even though the Edge and Christian match was, and, only, was only there. And the show was shorter because of Chuck and Larry or whatever that. I don't know. I don't think it was. SmackDown was just not a two-hour show. Well, I mean, this was an hour. I don't know. Um, I gave SmackDown 72 a seven. Oh, a thinking man. Uh, so are, are we doing half turn. points? Or are we just doing full we points? We can do half. We're fine. Are we doing quarter points? We can do quarters. We do an eighth points. Yeah, got to draw a line somewhere. Sixteenth. That's what. By the way, we are doing half points because we both we both gave Raw three ninety eight a half point. Well, you you gave it a four five. I gave it a five five. Wow, but that a shit show. Yeah, what (laughs) what happened? (laughs) What happened? Um, I gotta go seven five on this. This is a seven five to me. One up with me, half up with me. Well, I mean, I it was a six seven for SmackDown seventy two. So, um. This means Sin is next. Yes, Sin, Sin is. WCW Sin, Sin is next. Is next. Let me see if it's the last promo. I need to know if it's WCW's last promo. Uh, we'll, we will do kind of a live watch with that. Well, it'll be pre-taped, right? Well, or are you going to live stream it? To who? YouTube. To us. It'll record as it's live streamed. Yeah, we put on Facebook even. Pass. <laughs> I don't need Nick Crumb watching that. <laughs> We're friends of Pokemon Go now. So, <laughs> there's that. You That's fucking so weird. Idiot. You pulled him. You fucking idiot. Of all people. <laughs> of all people. Uh, um, what am I looking for? I'll tell you something. I'm oh, no, there is another one. Oh, my God. February 18th, 01. Oh, my God. What is it? There's two more pay per views. I'm fucking stoked on Woo! I'm because honest. I remember this being the fucking last one. Look at that fucking poster. Greed. Man. March 18th, 2001. Big pop up. That means there's some more fucking. There's a bunch more fucking nitros to get into. Shit. I'm all pumped up. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Okay, so Sin is next. Um, is are, Thunder over at this point? Yeah, Thunder only lasts for two years. Oh, okay. Um, or do you want to record an episode in addition? Like, do you want to have that up, and we'll put that in the can, we'll upload that next, and then we'll, we'll do an episode on whatever the next one is, too? This is, I guess we can talk about off air. This yeah. is something we can yeah. talk about on air. We'll, we'll figure it out. The next episode will be Sin, right? Yes. Okay. It will definitely be Sin. It'll well, be... Well, yes. It'll be... What were you thinking about this one? Yeah, because <laughs> technically... They need to see this to know this is yeah, being Yeah, because technically this is next week, and we're here... I'm confused with our timeline. WCW 2001, WCW Sin 2001 pay-per-view, in its entirety. Are we... Are, like, are you allowed to put it in the corner of the video or not? I don't think. Is there a way to do that, but remove it if we get removed? Mm, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll do the whole, you know, we'll count down to when we hit play, and then you can watch along if you want. Okay. I'm sure you won't enjoy it. But uh, WCW Sin. It's also WCW Sin, so it's gonna be fucking. We're fantastic. gonna enjoy these. It's either. gonna be great. Uh, that'll be next, and then I guess at the end of that we'll talk about what shows after that. It'll be the next Raw, I guess. Yep. Or directly after Sin, do you want to go right to Monday Nitro? We should probably do that. As much as I really don't want to. Yeah, you want it. You're in. I do the cat's gonna be fucking deep. Okay. Well, first off, if the cat is the main event, I'm in. We we will make predictions. Prior to watching it, like on the video, holy shit, we're gonna make we're predictions. We're making 2001 WCW Nitro. We're making predictions for Dick. 17 years later, I may know. <laughs> I may know some of the winners already, so I may have an advantage. <laughs> you watched it already, but hopefully you didn't watch have. the next one. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did because as soon as they added, on, as soon as they were on the network, I was like, I need to watch fucking. Wow, oh, I, I, I gotta see how this ended. 
Um, so that's it for this. I got Taker's Rip Jaw here. Uh, Taker's Rip Jaw. What time are we at? 105. So are we done? Yep. You want to plug whatever you got to plug? Ah, oh, not much to plug. Toy videos, stick of sores, if you're interested. Doing monthly now. Cause... Hold on. Some dude commented on our last fucking show. Yeah. Was that your boy from your toy video? No, thing? I don't know who that is. I thought like he found from your toy video, he was like, pick up the energy or something. No, he said, keep up the energy. Okay. I saw it and I said, okay. And, Bye. Like, that was it. I just, oh, oh. Great. Hey, at least we got a comment. Thanks for the advice. At least we got a comment. This is why we don't get them. Because I shit on anybody who comments. It's okay. We've been doing this for years. Yeah. Kind of years. For nothing. To spend time with each other. Uh, yeah. That's it. We still enjoy it. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's not like we do it for the comments. You if know. we did, we'd have been done at five. Yeah. There's no comments. <laughs> There's no money. I mean, we didn't even put it on YouTube until 60. Yeah. So. <laughs> is there still a bunch not on YouTube? Uh, yeah, there's like 30. Are they going to get lost? No, I, I I have the audio. I just got to put them on. It, it's a whole process. I just want to make sure they're not ever lost. I don't want to be lost. No, I have them. Will YouTube eventually take them down? No. Okay. They no. stay there forever? No, forever. I thought I thought YouTube takes things down. No, I have videos up from like 10 years ago. Yeah, but that's only 10 years. Okay, well, I, what happens after 20 years, I don't know. I have them all, so we're fine. I think. What about if you put them on MySpace? Well, we can bet him. Okay, you done? Yeah. More now? Yeah. You finished both of those? Almost. Okay. Uh, okay, well. I had too many of these. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you watch Sin with us. We're excited. We're ready to roll. Please watch Sin with us. Maybe we'll live stream it. That'd be a weird thing, because we might have to watch over our parents' house. It might get weird. <laughs> might be dog involved. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, there he is. On behalf, there's Taker's Tobacco to spit. That's your name, though. Here to, to Taker's, Taker's Chaw. Finish it. Okay, yeah, I gotta change the name now. <laughs> I gotta change the name now. You would be Lukewarm Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah, chicken seltzer. Yeah, there he is. Lukewarm Steve Austin. I'm Brand. Reminding you to ask yourself, what would Rick